Hello. Oh, hey guys. All right, happy Wednesday. Welcome back into my Viking kitchen. Um, what a great time we're having. What a great day. What a great season we're in. I mean, Chicago's so great right now. Um, last week we had Chef Mindy Siegel on. How fun was that, right? Today I was hanging out a little bit with, uh, I'm boasting now, but uh, Chef Stephanie Eiser. She's an amazing Chicago chef. I was talking with her this morning. Chicago is such a great food city. It's just an amazing city to have all these like foodies, right? So let's talk about the time of the year, right? So it's definitely coming to the end of summer. So with that said, we have a ton of fresh herbs in the garden right now. I have some rosemary, some beautiful purple basil, and some amazing thyme. I've got more herbs than you know what to do with around here, but this is a great time to utilize them all. So I'm gonna throw some little extra herbs into this recipe. So today we're gonna to do something very, um, most people think it's a southern dish, and I think it is. We're doing fried green tomatoes because heirloom tomatoes at this time of the year are absolutely my favorite. So. Um, the ones that I get, there's so many different varieties, right? The ones that I get are really sweet and thin skinned but beautiful in color. There's so many different varieties out there, guys. You can see lots of different shapes. And just because they're ugly and split, that doesn't mean that they're bad. You know, I say sometimes the ugly ones are the beautiful ones, right? So when you're looking at heirloom tomatoes, if you're in Illinois, you have to go to Ginger Blossom. It's in where, Rich? Island Lake? Spring Grove. Spring Grove. I get it wrong every time. Spring but it's in Spring Grove. Ginger Blossom is an organic farm and an incredibly cool, if you like design like I do, and furniture and accessories and jewelry and all those things, uh, Ginger Blossom is a great place to find not only that, but insanely good, inexpensive organic produce. It's a wonderful find. So we're gonna be making fried green tomatoes. So of course I spun it a little bit and I thought I would do a caprese salad. I love a caprese salad. But this time of year, now, when you're looking at a recipe uh, like fried green tomatoes, the recipe calls for green tomatoes, but you know what? You don't always have to use green tomatoes. Now, this time of year, you get the, the late harvest ones, right? The ones that the sun really don't get to because the seasons are changing. So you get those ripe uh, tomatoes that are beautiful, but you also get the unripe ones, the green ones, which are super hard. And the harder they are, the better they're gonna be for this recipe. You don't wanna get something too soft because it'll fall apart in the, uh, in the procedure. So I like to find really nice firm ones of different colors. Um, you wanna slice these about half an inch thick and I've already got some sliced. But first thing I wanna do is I wanna tell you about um, the quick sauce that I do with this recipe. Now, because I'm using heirloom tomatoes, they're so sweet and they're so juicy that they make a really great quick sauce that don't take a long time to cook. So I've got like, you wanna get like, if this is for two people or four people, a nice big ripe one is what works best. You probably get about four servings of the fried green tomatoes with this dish. So let's go over to my little red friend over here, my Viking range. And I have to say that this range, if this little red range could speak, it would speak fluent cookbook. I don't even know how many meals I've cooked on this Viking 5 Series range. Now this is a 30 inch one. These come in varying sizes. So you can get a 5 Series range up to 60 inches with a grill and a, a griddle. But mine doesn't have any of that. But that doesn't mean that I can't cook like crazy on it. So because I had this size kitchen when I moved in, I got a 30 inch range. But a 5 Series range has all the power. It's got a like... If you were to look at it as a horse, it would be a Clydesdale or maybe a draft horse. In our line, it's the workhorse in the line. So I've got a couple of things going on here. So first thing I have going on is I've got one nice onion. So if you're at the farmer's market and you see like maybe even a Vidalia onion, some fresh garlic, you want to get that going in some olive oil until it's translucent, guys. Translucent means that it's clear, that you can see through it just like that. So I've got some heat going there. And then all I do, this recipe could not be simpler. All I do is I cut one of those heirloom tomatoes, the large one, in sections, just like that. No drama, so simple, wait for me. And then you give it a little bit of salt and pepper, right? That's really all the recipe is. Good olive oil, a nice size, medium-sized onion, a little bit of Himalayan salt up in there, 
and some fresh cracked black pepper. That's all it is. That's what I use for the base of this dish. And then I get about, I don't know, you have the recipe. I put in some hot water to get it going, to get the, the, uh, the base going a little bit. So I want to say hello to some friends. Who do we got here, Rich? Wow, look at all those people. Sandy. Ruth Lane is on there. Hey, Ruth. Missy Peters. Maya Dowling. Keith. Who's Keith? Keith down the bottom there. What does Keith have to say? Um, all right. So anyway, we're going to keep going. Um, here in my pot, like I told you, one heirloom tomato, onions, garlic, salt, and pepper. Done. You let that cook, right? So that just gets cooked down until it's soft and looks like a tomato sauce. Maybe I'll finish it with a little bit of olive oil, but that's it, it's a quick sauce. You can do that with heirloom tomatoes. They're not gonna be bitter. Um, they're gonna be more on the sweet side and juicy, so remember I said that. Also on my five series range, on simmer, I've got my balsamic vinegar. Now that's not in the recipe. You know me, I have to add in a couple of things. So you see those bubbles there, folks? That's about a cup of balsamic vinegar reducing on low. Now, one of the best things about Viking Range, as you know, is that all of our burners simmer so low that they're actually more like warmers. So I get to utilize all my burners tonight and they're simmering super, super low. And I've got my simmer, my balsamic vinegar. So I reduced it, that's all I did. Get some good quality balsamic vinegar and reduce it down, reduce it down until you start to see these bubbles around the edge right here. They will talk to you. They'll tell you that I'm almost reduced, Jamie, I'm almost reduced because the bubbles will get bigger and this will become thicker. You don't want to go too far with that because it burns super fast. So you kind of want to keep it on a low simmer like only a Viking range can do and then you want to get it on that low, low simmer. Now on the other back burner simmering, I also have some garlic. Now that is just some whole garlic cloves that I have on the back burner in a little saute pan. Again, just browning slowly. And I poached that garlic back there. Not in the recipe, but these are things you can always have on the side to incorporate in other recipes. For example, a fried egg with a, dribble, a drizzle of balsamic vinegar and some Parmigiano Reggiano all day long, love it. Um, but balsamic reduction is great in salads, great in dressings, great to drizzle over other grilled vegetables. If you have a Viking grill, um, you can go out there and grill some great vegetables. Around this time of year, you've got all kinds of great vegetables out there coming into the end of season. You've got uh, heirloom tomatoes, you've got corn, um, lots of great, I picked some zucchini, some beautiful eggplant, looks like jewelry. Yeah, I see a question. Would you choose a red range again or a different color? Okay, that is a wonderful question because you know, you never know. Um, I probably, now Viking has 14 new insanely beautiful colors. Uh, they're called the Delta Hues. Um, they're beautiful. I may have helped pick one or two, I don't know. But um, they are really stunning, beautiful colors, so there's a lot to choose from. Because I do a lot of cooking videos, I like my range to be like the focal point, you know? Obviously, I love colors. So there's something about all the colors that I love, and it's a very hard question for me to answer because you know me as a designer, not only a chef, those colors speak to me on many, many, many different levels. So the Delta Hues, I have my favorites, the Pacific Gray, the, um, the Bywater Blue is so stunning, guys. Go look at that range. Go on vikingrange.com and you can actually be interactive and change the color of your ranges. So pretty. There's really a Hunter Green that I love. And I also love the white. I have this affinity towards a white range or it just reminds me of like clean, fresh cooking. So I'm a big fan of white. I'm a big fan of them all. But I love my little red, red uh, range here. It's done me well. All right, so guys, this looks good to me on the balsamic end. I'm gonna let that go. And then over here, I'm gonna turn off my heat. On my right burner, I just wanna check on my sauce. And maybe I'll take that down to a low simmer. Now you see how that looks, guys? You might think to yourself, oh, that's kind of ugly. It's not. You crush that up. And then the skin from the, um, the heirloom tomato will naturally peel and come up to the top and you can remove that skin um, and get that uh, out of the way. Now, if you wanted to add some fresh chopped thyme to this or basil, or if you wanna spice it up with some hot sauce, if you like things spicy, I've got chili flake in here as well. So this is gonna be a little bit spicy, but you see how chunky that is? That's what I'm looking for. This is a very rustic Italian style dish. 
Now, the funny thing about green tomatoes, fried green tomatoes, that is, is that when I did a little a bit of my uh, R&D for the video, I realized that, you know, they are definitely a southern classic, but they are really also, um, they date way back to the 1600s, believe it or not, in the Jewish community. There's a cookbook out there, um, I can't reference the cookbook, but it speaks about fried green tomatoes. So I think that, you know, a lot of people utilize tomatoes um, all across the world in this way. But I think the South really grabbed onto that recipe. So let's go back to the counter. And I want to show you guys that, first of all, cheers to you guys. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Have a drink if you're of age. Make sure your hands are nice and clean before you do this. As you noticed when I um, started, I was washing my hands. Um, you're at home in your own kitchen. Nobody's watching you. You're all watching me. But um, you want to have three different bowls with your ingredients, right? So you want to do this right. Now, I always recommend that the tomatoes are cold because if they're warm, they really let their juices out. And that's the one thing you don't want this to be is wet. So I like to have three different bowls with my ingredients. The first one has flour. The second one has egg and milk or you can use, like I did today, half and half, nobody's gonna yell at you. And then the third one's the most important one. This is a combination of cornmeal and panko breadcrumbs. Guys, panko breadcrumbs, whenever you're frying anything, if you're using like your classic Italian breadcrumbs, okay, change it up with panko. Panko is a Japanese style bread that's dried out and then uh, pulverized to create panko breadcrumbs. There's something about panko breadcrumbs, especially on like things like this, fried shrimp, anything fried, um, that just gives you that little layer of extra crunch. So remember I said this was the last and the most important layer. It's because you can season it to your liking. In the recipe, I gave you a spice mix. If you don't like those spices, question. How long do you cook the sauce? Total good, time. Good question. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe. Okay, so it's, uh, I turn mine down to low. I might go even lower, down to that Viking simmer I told you guys about. So. Let's go back to the breading of this, if you will. So it's a three-step process. You want to get your tomatoes, like I said, sliced to about half an inch, right? So you'll notice that this is really super wet. That's cold wetness. Warm wetness is different, it would drip. So first layer is the flour. You want to make sure that that flour gets all inside those crevices, inside the tomato, and you want to get a nice coating around the edges, right? Because that's important that you want to have all sides of the tomato covered. So this is the first layer, the first step. The second step is this egg wash. This, like I said, is milk and egg. Very, very simple. I even like to use my separate utensils for each bowl so you don't get everything all mixed up. So you want to make sure there's a nice layer of egg wash on this so, again, it hits those ends, right? Okay, so the third step is the panko breading and the cornmeal. In this recipe, I changed it up. I added, because I wanted it spicy, I added some smoked paprika. I added a little bit of curry powder. Um, I removed the cumin. Um, I did some smoked salt, ground smoked salt, and a little bit of red chili flake just to change it up. So my my comment to you, and the reason why I'm telling you this, is that you can make this your own, but this is what you want to end up with, okay? You want a nice coated cornmeal and panko coating. And there you go. And that's what it looks like when it's done, okay? So I've got a couple of these going. And let's talk a little bit about the filling while I go back to my range and crank up my heat on my oil. So I have corn oil and vegetable oil combination over there because I ran out. If you have vegetable oil, great. If you have corn oil, great. Um, so, when we talk about um, filling, okay, you can change it up. You can change it up. So, in the recipe, all I had was mozzarella, but I thought about it and I'm like, wait a minute, I think I had this another way. You can change it up, right? So, I have some fresh ricotta cheese. If you were to take a lemon and zest that into the ricotta cheese with a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe some raw honey and mix that together, that is a delicious center for those fried green tomatoes, okay? Another idea for you guys. Um, I serve this so many different ways, with a salad, with a sauce, on their own, without anything. They're delicious on their own, just dipped. 
if you want to make a platter of these and just make a great dipping sauce in the center, something that's like maybe just some sour cream and um, something that's like really fresh and green, like maybe a lot of like, like almost like a green goddess dressing with the fried green tomatoes, yes, all day long. So I just wanted to show you that ricotta. All right, so let's go over to the range and check out what's going on over there. So, any questions, comments? Anybody have, are you guys with me? Are you with me? Uh, my grandmother had a white stove when I was a kid. She... Only Bob Barker called them ranges when I was a kid. Are you calling me Bob Barker? Did someone just call me Bob? Yeah, I think you did. You, you, well... you know what, Bob Barker's cool. I'll go, I'll take Bob Barker. What a career that guy had. Get um, your pets spayed or neutered. What's that? Get your pets spayed or neutered. Was that Bob Barker? Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know. I believe it was. Okay, I guess it was. All right, so guys, on the quick sauce, let's look at it. The quick sauce is looking delicious, I have to say. That's about 15 minutes in there. Everything is getting nice and soft. Um, you can puree this even more if you have like a hand blender. I never do. I like it just like that. So that's going really, really well. And I've got that on a low simmer, only like a Viking can do. All right, so I'm ready to do the next step. My balsamic is reduced, my garlic looks delicious. And the next step is to fry these green tomatoes. So one thing you don't want to do, guys, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be crazy, right? You don't want to like flip these around, nor do you want to squish them and let out the juices because they're tender, right? They're tomatoes. They're not as like, um, you know, it's not like you're frying a chicken cutlet, right? You're frying a tomato. So look at this. So I've got some beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. And I already know just by the sizzle that these are gonna be amazing. So I have my heat on high. My Viking burner is set to high. And I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, but you wanna use high heat because you don't, also, you don't wanna turn these around too much. This is not something that you're gonna be flipping over and over again. This is something that you wanna turn once. So how I know that they're gonna be brown and beautiful on the, um, on the underside, because I've done it about fast. No, I'm gonna look at the edge, right? So I'm gonna make sure that the edge, which you can see right now, guys, is turning white, right? That's the first step. When that starts to look golden brown, that's when I know I make my flip. Now, you don't wanna to go too far with the tomatoes either, because a burnt outside and a mushy inside is never good. And they have to maintain their shape, if you will, to get to the final stage of the dish, which you guys will understand when I'm done. So a couple of things while these are frying. Um, thank you guys for joining uh, every week. Uh, we're gonna have special guests. Uh, make sure you watch Chef Jackie in New York City as well. Um, we have a lot of new products coming around uh, the bend, a lot of new incentives, really great incentives. You can get like a free set of pots and pans, free appliances. If you're redoing your kitchen, like everybody in the world is doing right now, by the way, if they're gonna redo your kitchen with Middleby Residential and one of our brands, uh, there are incentives, great incentives that you can uh, take advantage of, where you can almost outfit a whole kitchen by buying two or three appliances, free dishwashers, free microwaves, free money towards the hood, even cash back. So think about that and think about our brand and tell your friends because we're making so many great changes with the products and it's really exciting. I love the colors and I love what I'm seeing. Most of all is customers coming back into our showroom loving their new kitchen. So, all right, back to this. I love to cook with sound, guys, right? So the more sizzly this gets, if that's a word, the more noise it's gonna make, right? So you wanna make sure that you don't go too far with these. And now I think I'm gonna make my first and only turn. You see that golden brown goodness right there? That's what you want. You want them to be golden brown. Not too yellow, not too brown. Golden brown, true golden brown. Now. The other thing that I want to talk to you about, guys, is the mozzarella in between. So I took my mozzarella out. I call it mozzarella. That's my Italian boy in me. But mozzarella, keep that at room temperature because you want to get these drained on your paper towel so the oil comes out of them. But you want to make sure that they're still warm so it can melt the cheese. So if you're using mozzarella, room temperature mozzarella, why? Because if it's cold, it's gonna take longer to melt. So if it's room temperature, it'll melt faster with the temperature of the fried green tomatoes. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? All right, so I'm gonna turn these around and they look super beautiful, I have to tell you. 
This is exactly what I'm looking for. By the way, this is a Viking pan that I'm using. Viking has an amazing collection of pots and pans as well. This is a Viking range cast iron. Somebody's admiring your large tweezers. Why, thank you. Yes, that is quite a large tweezer. And I mean, this is like, these are so helpful. Like, you know me when I'm plating. They're so helpful. Aren't these great? I think I got these at um, Williams Sonoma. So Rich, do not drop the camera. Very, very important. So while the um, tomatoes are getting golden brown on the other side, I'm actually going to take my sauce over to my uh, plating. Everything is coming out gorgeous. It's because of this lucky little red range of my therapy. All right, so this is a very pretty dish, guys. And I'm done with all of this breading. So one of the things that you don't want to do, I have a lot more tomatoes to coat. I'm going to do more of those later. You don't want to do too much of that because you don't want to waste and throw that out. But um, I do want to show you that I have this beautiful little plate. I made it myself. I'm into pottery. Look how cool this is, the edge. This is my signature edge. So this is one of the plates that I made myself. And then you want to take your tomato sauce. And it doesn't need to be super hot. It could almost be like room temperature when you serve it. But you want to get a nice plate of that beautiful tomato sauce, right? Looking gorgeous, smelling wonderful, tastes delicious. And now back here, I'm going to take my tomatoes off. I'll be right back. Wait right there. I'll take any questions or comments, concerns. Thanks, we're very seeing this. Looking lovely. Okay, thank you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and watching me every week. Okay, so my tomatoes are looking super gorgeous. Very excited about these tomatoes, I have to tell you. I'm very excited about every single one of you guys that watches. Please tell your friends um, about what we're doing. I mean, I get really excited to come home after a long day's work, believe it or not. And this is part of my job, but I don't look at it as work. It's just so much fun being with you guys, uh, talking about my company, Middleby. It's an amazing company that focuses on commercial, mostly equipment. Um, Brava is another one of our companies. I love that brand as well. If you guys want to check out something cool, check out Brava. Um, now my tomatoes, right? Remember I talked to you about them still being hot. So I need them to be hot in order to melt the cheese. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a stack. And number one, she goes right in the tomato sauce. And then I take a piece of mozzarella, and then I season that with a little bit of salt and pepper. Super cute. A little salt and pepper right there, folks. And then a beautiful piece of fresh garden basil. And I put that layered in just like so. This is purple basil, so it may look strange to you, but it looks gorgeous to me. Came from my garden out there. And then you just layer it down, right? Layer number two. And it's just so fun to make, you know, this dish, it brings back so many memories of even living in Italy. When I was a chef, young chef in Italy, we used to make these from the garden in the summer along with zucchini flowers. Um, that's another great recipe. I think I did that on one of my videos recently. And what about the ricotta? So now the ricotta, okay, I wanted to show you. Thanks for asking, Rich. Um, on the ricotta front, we'll do something different, okay? We'll make another little cute dish. This is a little impromptu, a little craziness happening. Um, I get a little bit of the tomato sauce. Doesn't have to be, I mean, yes, it has to be pretty. What am I saying? Um, everything I do has to be pretty because it's just the way I am. And then you have your fried green tomato on top of there. That breading looks scrumptious. All right, so on the uh, ricotta sauce, now if I was to do the lemon zest, the, um, the lemon zest, the, um, what did I say? You can even put a little bit of roasted garlic in here greens like um, green onion or even some thyme. Season it up is what I'm trying to say. And then another great idea is to use prosciutto. So I've got some fresh sliced prosciutto. I was on the phone earlier with somebody from work and we were talking about prosciutto. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go a little nuts and I'm gonna throw in some prosciutto into the recipe because if we're talking about it, that must mean that it needs to be in the, at the party, right? So then I've got some prosciutto happening here. 
Look at that. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like happening in the stack. Now you wanna have some fun with it? Wanna go a little crazy? Um, use a stem of rosemary. And get that inside there like that. Maybe that's a cute way of serving it. Now, I have some balsamic reduction back here. So easy to do, makes you look like a big deal, like a big chef. When you're not, you just love to cook. Look at that beautiful syrupy balsamic vinegar. Come on guys, look at that. That is a, a round of applause or, get, or some hearts, whatever you guys need to do. Are we looking at Ted back there? Oh, that's Woody. Woody, what do you think? What, what do you think about the, the yeah, Woody's, Woody's totally, oh, you see him lick his lips? Oh my goodness, Woody. Woody is totally into that. And then I give a nice drizzle, ready folks? A nice drizzle of balsamic vinegar over the top. Look how beautiful that looks. Huh? Come on, look at that. Now, I'm not done yet, because I still feel it needs a layer of pretty. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my roasted garlic here. Just as a little, you know, something, something. A little friend sitting on top. Look at that, huh? Huh, huh guys? And I love roasted garlic, so look at this delicious little monster right here. Um, that's something that I am really going to enjoy, no lie. Okay, so look at that, there we go. Look at that beautiful dish. Easy, you guys can do it so simply. Now if I wanted to do the ricotta really quick, why not? We're here, right, we're friends, we got time. I'm gonna throw some Parmigiano Reggiano because I had it right there. Oh, you want some too? You got a lot of hearts, you got a lot of hearts for the wanting to make the ricotta, you like which that? is, well, okay. it, you got a lot of hearts from me. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is giving me hearts for making the ricotta? Okay, fine. So, Parmesan cheese. I'm making it up. A little bit of lemon zest. Why not? Let's go crazy, folks. So we've got a little bit of lemon zest happening up in there for the filling. Now I've got all this gorgeous thyme. I got nothing but thyme on my hands. That was a good one. That was a good one, guys. That was a good one. No? That was good. Was it a good one? Yeah, it was good. Was it good? So I've got this fresh thyme, and I'm gonna throw some of that fresh thyme up in there. The stems are super soft on these, so I'm gonna chop them into it. Normally I'd be picking them, um, but the stems are super soft. I'll throw that in there. Um, maybe a little bit of nutmeg. Why not? Let me go to the spice bowl. Stay right there, guys. Maybe a little bit of nutmeg. Have you guys ever seen my spice bowl? Have I ever showed it to you? Um, a little bit of nutmeg happening. I love this spice ball, so easy. I love spices, spices are my jam. I'll teach you and show you my magic spices very soon. All right, so here we go. In there, maybe a little salt and pepper, a little seasoning, there you go. Just like so, mix it up, no big deal, super simple. Just like that and then maybe put a little bit of ricotta on top of this. If you had another layer, that would be awesome. You wanna use prosciutto, why not? This is what I'm gonna be eating for dinner. Throw a little prosciutto on top of that. Make it look pretty. Just like so. Love it, I love food. Food is art, it makes me crazy. And then maybe a little thyme on top. Since I got so much time on my hands, I used it twice. I used, used it, it twice. twice. It was and a then, joke so good you had to use it twice. Joke so good you had to use it twice. There you go. And then you clean the platter a little bit, clean the plate. I don't want to be messy here. Um, another cute little dish. There you go. So I think I've nailed it. I think I've showed you guys some really great stuff tonight. Now please try this at home. Show me some love. Show me that you use these recipes. Every week we'll come back with... Um, we have the leaning tower of tomato happening right here. So you wanna serve this, you wanna serve this right away so it melts onto the plate, but it's doing a good job on its own. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Middleby um, Corporation loves that you guys are watching. Thank you very much Viking Range for having me on these great um, cooking lives. I'll see you guys next week. Stay safe, wash your hands, be good, be good to each other, be kind to each other. It's time to be kind. From my heart of my Viking kitchen to your heart at home, I love you guys and see you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. <laughs>